Hey, this is Sasha Evdikov, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Stocks. In today's episode, episode number 94, I'll be talking about trading penny stocks in the stock market. We'll talk about some of the theory, the advantages, and some of the risks that go along with trading penny stocks. Uh, we'll spend about you know 30 to 40 minutes, as usual, on this lesson, and I'll just try to condense and compress as much knowledge and information about penny stocks in that time frame that I have allowed. So it's not going to give you everything to trading penny stocks in the world, but it'll definitely give you some insight to trading some of the smaller companies, um, the penny stocks, why I personally don't trade penny stocks, uh, why I prefer to trade other stocks, but I understand that there is a demand for trading penny stocks, a demand for uh, that interest of information of how to trade penny stocks, at least from my point, my perspective, and uh, this video should give you some more of that insight because for some people, it's a great way to do their trading. And for other people, you know, you might want to focus on other things. So whether you're interested in trading penny stocks or not, uh, this video should still give you some insight to uh, the market as a whole and looking at some other factors when evaluating stocks and uh, looking at stocks, trading stocks, getting in, getting out of positions, because uh, the theory and the concepts are very similar. So I do want to spend a little more time on penny stocks specifically simply because I don't spend that much time on them and I know that there's a demand for that information and uh, this video should open up your eyes a little more to some of the lower priced stocks. So that's what we'll be talking about in this episode, episode number 94. If you missed it this week, we did post a video uh, that's about 20 minutes long for the Critical Charts members. So go ahead and take a look at that video. It's listed on the website and it still does apply today, uh, probably for the next week or two, a couple of weeks. There's some good theories and concepts in there as well relative to how the market is is moving, acting, and behaving. So for example, some of the stocks like uh, Facebook over here, they try to get above it and then they're pulling back into these ranges, more so looking for earnings. Uh, the SPY or the uh, SPX uh, is having one, one of the pullback days. Volume is slowly starting to pick up. We'll see if we get a continuation on Friday there before the weekend because sometimes you do. People get scared before the weekend and they'll pull out their uh, positions. So we'll see how that works out because uh, we did have a very long extensive streak. It's really far away from that moving average. So time will tell if we do get that pullback. So just keep an eye on it. Uh, lightly, but uh, review that video in the critical charts to get more insight about um, the market as a whole. Really, uh, we, we mentioned this last time, if you look at the Wilshire 5000, this is really the overall total market index. And you can see it's coming up into the highs, but rejecting it for the time being. Could it break through? Absolutely. Uh, if you look at the IWM as well, it keeps trying to break through. And we may get it to break through if it continues knocking on that ceiling. So just uh, stay nimble um, and uh, be patient. Uh, but you want to be cautious in case you get a major pullback because it needs that digestion. This sideways digestion is necessary after having such an explosive uh, run to the upside. It's normal. It's, it's, uh, it's healthy for uh, the market, the stocks to do that as a whole. And it really comes down to earnings and fundamentals as well. Typically, if you have great charts, you have great fundamentals. If you have great fundamentals, you have great charts. And that's the way things work. So getting into today's lesson, let's take a look at some penny stocks and I'll just try and share as much detail as I can here in the time that we have allowed. And uh, let's just go into it. So when I look at penny stocks, there's a couple things that you can do to pull up some penny stocks. Um, if you have an uh, index, the S&P 500 is not going to have a lot of penny stocks. So when you look at this and you start looking at price, in theory, what we define as a penny stock in the past, it used to be stocks that were under a dollar, hence the name penny stocks. But then the def definition slowly changed uh, due to inflation and so forth to stocks to two or three dollars. And then again, the definition got changed to stocks less than $5. And for me personally, I I define penny stocks really when I talk about them as just stocks that are in the a lower 10% bracket 
in terms of price relative to the market. So, you know, you could say about eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars. That to me is still considered kind of a penny stock or a cheaper stock. So the definition now does not really apply to just stocks under a dollar. It used to be that way in the early nineteen hundreds, but nowadays the definition has changed to less than five dollars as the technical definition. And with time with inflation it'll probably change to seven dollars, ten dollars, and so on. So we will see as time goes on. So when you look at the S&P 500, you'll notice there's not um, not a company right here that's really in the cheaper range with the exception of a few uh, that, that trade you know around four or five dollars. So what you need to do is when you look at um, the penny stocks, there's a um, there's there's a couple of, uh, of things that you could look at. So you could look at, let's say, for example, the NYSE. So this would be the New York Stock Exchange, and this would be uh, a lot of different uh, tickers, a lot of different stocks. Okay, so you could do that, and then when you sort and filter by price, you can see here you have, uh, you know, stocks a dollar, a dollar twenty-three, a dollar fifty. So this in total has four thousand seven hundred and eighteen stocks. Uh, you could also, if you want to condense something, you could do the Russell 3000, which is about 2,847 stocks. It's going to give you a little bit of a smaller list, potentially a little more better balance sheets on this list. Uh, but you can still find stocks that are right there around, you know, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. So as you scroll through the list, you'll be able to see here. Uh, that the stocks are at a cheaper rate. And then you also have the AMAX uh, composite index. So this one also has quite a bit of stocks. This only has about 295 on this watch list, but but it also has some additional stocks. Now, of course, you could look at um, penny stocks that have uh, bulletin boards. Let me see if they have it. NASDAQ bulletin boards, NASDAQ pink sheets right here. So yes, you could look at just the NASDAQ as well, which again has cheaper stocks. Or you have these bulletin boards and pink sheets. Now, I definitely recommend you stay away from the bulletin boards, pink sheets, because a lot of these, they're, they're just traded very poorly. And you'll notice that with the charts. Um, you know, Let's see if we can even pull anything up. A lot of these are just over the counter and you can see that the share price is all over the per place and these get manipulated very easily. So I would definitely say stay away from these kinds of things um, because it'll be very dangerous if the company folds and, and so on. Just because it trades on the stock market or because it appears bigger doesn't make the company valuable. Doesn't mean the company's making money. There's a lot of companies, if you look at business as a whole, most businesses, 95% of businesses as a whole, fail within the first year. After three years, about 98% of businesses fail within you know, a, a few of those years. After about 10 years, about 98, 99% of businesses fail. And that is just simply the nature of business. So the companies that you're looking at right here, even though they're on the stock market, that doesn't mean they can't fail. And there have been some major companies that failed, even companies that were on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and so on. So it's important you be disciplined to be aware that just because they're listed here doesn't mean it's going to work out properly. Now, the natural thing for many companies to do, if we look at the S&P 500, for in general, uh, the natural thing for most companies to do, especially if we look at uh, larger companies like, let's say, a Google, an Amazon, their normal tendency, the natural thing for them to do, what happens in the future, is that they naturally gravitate towards growing. Now, eventually they get too big and then the growth slows down, okay? But the natural thing for them to do is to grow in the future as a company. They expand their warehouses, their buildings, they acquire companies. That's the natural thing to do. Now, as you... Um, as you continue to grow a company, you'll see explosive growth, similar to how Tesla here, which is fairly new, uh, you know, you have that explosive growth. You had the building phase, you had the growth phase. Now you have kind of a stabilization phase, okay? And then you might see another growth phase or you could see a pullback phase. You know, it just depends. But really, the natural tendency for most companies, especially if they're stable companies 
is to grow in the future, just like FedEx. Okay, if you look at uh, you know the long term history of that company, the natural thing for it to do is to grow. Okay, from the '90s all the way into the 2000s, had a little pullback, and then again, you had that next growth phase. So the natural thing for them to do is to grow. For penny stocks, it's actually the opposite. It's a little backwards, even though you may say, well, for many companies, they're there for growth, but If you look at penny stocks and we look at the NASDAQ and we start looking at companies that are priced at, let's say, 39 cents here, the natural tendency for these companies is not to grow. Um, The business owner, of course, wants that company to grow because they would make money, but that's not the way penny stocks work out. Because think of the 90-10 or 80-20 principle. Uh, If you go into a grocery store, where is the healthiest food in that 20% of the grocery store? It's in that healthy food section, in the vegetables, the fruits. That's where you want to stay and hang around. So most people who are investing, who are trading stocks, they're sticking to the top you know, 20% of the companies that are traded. They're not sticking to all these 3,000 companies. They're sticking to the top uh, 500 companies, top 200, top 20 companies. For me, just trading five, seven companies at most is is really all you need. Uh, But here, if you look at it, initially you'll get this uh, surge and then the natural tendency for this company over time, in general, if you look through many penny stocks, most of them will sell off. They might get a few pops here and there, but the natural movement, most of the time, they're there to sell. So the way I look at it is if you're not comfortable with shorting, you're going to have a struggle with penny stocks because most of the time they should be shorted. Uh, Of course, there are opportunities where they could be bought like this during this uh, movement to the upside, and then you have to take some profits, but then most of the time they're there to be shorted. So as you look through other companies, let's just look at some of these other companies, you'll notice the trading looks a little weird and funky. Sometimes the trades aren't being executed very well. Other times they're stagnant. The price gets manipulated. And that is simply because it doesn't take a lot of money to move these stocks. So there's a lot more manipulation that happens. And again, if I take this out to the weekly, you can see the manipulation that happens. This is all manipulation, buyers, and low volume and low liquidity, one of the reasons why I don't trade it. So once you get into this, and if you're stuck, let's say at $1.11, $1.12 here, and it just stays under there, you could be stuck for years. You could be stuck for years, especially if you have money tied in there. You're better off to just take your money, sell, and get out of your profits. And here's the reason why I personally, another reason why I personally don't trade these stocks um, um, and companies, but you know there there are ways that you could trade them, which I'll talk about here shortly. So the thing is, is there's not enough liquidity as you trade. These are penny stocks are a great way for people to think and have the hope, have the dream and vision to making it big and rich. So if we look at, let's just find a company and I'm just skimming here. So let's say you're get into this company right here at $1.82 a share, okay? And this company explodes to $5. If we take a calculator, okay? So you're in at 186 and you're at $5. Let's just say it's a $3 gain for you. Okay, and with a $3 gain, what you can do is if you got a $3 gain and you bought, let's say, 30,000 shares, okay, $30,000 because it's about $1.18. So let's say you had $30,000, $3 gain. You're, you're tripling your money pretty much. You're at $90,000. So for many people, that's amazing. They, they look at that return and it's remarkable because of, of that spike that you can get. Because of those spikes that you can get, they look at that and they get attracted to that due to the hope, the, the, the greed, and um, just the potential, the potential to make it big. But remember what I said about the natural tendencies and the natural energy of penny stocks. Most of them will sell off. So yes, you do have these initial pops in stocks that they may pop 3 $4, 
but then the majority of the time they're selling for most of the time. So you're looking for specific movements in these companies and this is how you trade them for specific movements of overbought, oversold, and then you trade them accordingly. Okay, so when looking at these and you start scanning these, you'll notice that some of them are just traded very poorly and thinly. And this is in part due to what happens when you have a thinly traded stock, you get manipulation. And that's why you get prices that shift around all over the place. So for example, if you look at this company right here, which is 52 cents, uh, 52 cents, and it normally trades about 83,000 shares here. On average, let's just say 100,000 shares or 90,000 shares. So today it was 83,000. So let's say if I wanted to buy this stock or even manipulate this stock, it doesn't take a lot of capital. And it's one of the reasons why hedge funds also cannot trade this. So here, looking at it, if I did, let's say, 150,000 shares and I bought bought it at, let's say, 53 cents or 54 cents, 53 cents, it would only cost me about $80,000. And I could do the whole purchase of that stock for the day with $80,000, which would probably pop it to about mm, 83 cents, 80 cents. It would, it would move that stock. Now, that might sound great, but then how do you get out of it, you know, because once you start dumping, more people are going to dump. Because remember, there's other people at higher levels. So with hedge funds that are managing major money, as your account grows, you're going to have more difficulty buying stocks, shares, getting in and out of positions. That's just the problem with trading these cheaper stocks, especially here at the 50 cents, 80 cents. They can be manipulated. And you might see little spikes to the upside only to suck you in. And then it'll roll back over a lot lower. So to recap, summarize, the natural tendencies for large stocks like, let's say, an Apple, even though Apple's been going down lately, the normal tendency for it is to grow as a company, right? Just like Visa, just like MasterCard, naturally, they're there for growth. They grow as a company. For penny stocks, as you look at these penny stocks, their natural tendencies are to actually sell off and get manipulated. That's the nature of that business. So they may pop, but then they get sold off. They may pop, they get sold off. This is just the way it works in in the markets with penny stocks. Most of them are, are there to be sold, not to be bought or invested in. Now, the main question comes down to is, can you trade them? And yes, absolutely, you can trade them. If you have a smaller account, if you're looking to trade in a smaller account, you can trade penny stocks. But is it more worthwhile or advantageous to trade a penny stock versus a larger stock? Now, the appeal initially is always the pops. Um, the appeal is usually the, the popping action that you get with these kinds of stocks, which is due to, in part, the manipulation. Um, but you can still trade them, but is it worth it? Is it worth trading them? Because when you trade stocks like a Google, even though you might only be able to buy, let's say, five or 10 shares, let's say you have a $30,000 account, Okay, so let's just do a quick little calculation. If I have a $30,000 account and the stock is $600, okay, I might only be able to get 50 shares. And in that 50 shares, if that stock runs up, that stock is running up, like a Google may run up 140, 130 points. Okay, so 130 points times... Um, times 50 shares, so 130 times 50 shares, you're getting $6,500. So that seems pretty good, okay? But if you look at a penny stock, let's just say again, we have $30,000 divided by, let's say, a $2 penny stock, 15,000 shares. So let's say you get, mm, on the safety side, let's say you get 10,000 shares and it moves up on you about, you know, $2, okay? So there you're making $20,000. So $20,000 seems much more attractive than maybe $6,500, um, you know, because it's just 
much more money. It's twice the money. However, keep in mind that what is the natural tendency of the stock for a penny stock? It's for it to go down. And sometimes you get stuck. Sometimes it's manipulated. And not all the time does it work out. So the risk to reward is much more so as you start adding things in. And the movement on a day-to-day basis is different. As you do more and more calculations, you'll be able to see that the differences are actually much more minimal. Because for me, at night, holding a penny stock, rather than holding something like a Google or a Visa or a MasterCard, uh, I'd much more favor holding and sleeping better at night, holding a stable company. If you're trading penny stocks, it's more geared for people who are really active in the markets, I would say, or people who are really focused at the computer and are able to get in and out of trades within a few days. So this is the way that I would trade it if you're attracted to penny stocks. The way that I would trade it is I would look for a stock that's maybe uh, trades a little bit more shares. So here you could see this one traded 10,000 shares. Okay, or 39,000 shares, the volume, you're looking at the volume. So this is 12,000. So you're looking for something that has a little more volume, you know, a little average volume, but not too high. And you're looking for, again, a pattern. So now you, as, you, as you get into these volume areas that look okay, for example, look at this stock. It, they continue to split it to try and, you know, pop that stock higher. So as you look through this, you're looking for volume that's popping. So here, this is, would be a good example. So this stock continues to move lower, okay? It's going down, down, down. And now, as you see that volume picking up, you would have to get into that stock right away, right when it breaks that level. It's got a few levels it's breaking at a $1.75, $1.65. You start getting into that stock. And then within one or two days, as it pops, because it went from a dollar twenty or so, it pops and explodes, and you get out. You get out at eight dollars, nine dollars, five dollars, because it it quadrupled. It went four, five, seven times its value. You already start selling. Okay, you get in it right away, and then you start selling. Because the problem with this is if you get into these stocks, you know, and you're thinking it's going to go higher like an investment, let's just say you got in it somewhere over here in 2012, you could be holding that stock for four or five years until that pop comes. So in these companies, you're more so waiting for, you're waiting for that break or that pop. And, it, and this is what happened. You've got this descending uh, trend line. Boom, volume picks up right there. You see that volume spike relative and comparing it to the previous volume. So you could see the previous volume was kind of around 200,000, okay? And then when we came in, volume all of a sudden started to explode, okay? If you got 150% of the normal daily volume, that's a good thing. It all is about volume. Just like with the big stocks. With the big stocks, it's a little more difficult to see but with these stocks, you can see them quite easily because they don't trade that heavy. And now as we get more trading coming in, boom, we explode to the upside. And this stock right now, VLTC, exploded from April to for just a couple days, about two weeks, uh, to the upside. And we hit our all-time highs was really 20, but... Um, but then we're, we pulled back and we closed out around $11. And now look at what's happening to the stock. What is the natural tendency, the natural energies for it to go back lower? And where is it? Back down at the $3 level. Now, yes, it's a little higher than it was before, but this is how money is made and how, how money is uh, made in the markets with these penny stocks. And this is the way you do it. You you get in it right away on the break, okay, with these penny stocks. Then right away, once it starts going, one or two days later, and if we look at the daily, let's see how the daily action panned out here. You can see you got in on the break, stock continued, maybe you add a little bit, you add a little more, volume still strong. Then once you see the volume rolling over, you're out, you're out, that's it. No ifs, ands, or buts, because look at what happens later. That stock continues to move lower. 
And this is how you have to trade penny stocks is they're quick, they're in for a week or two. Sometimes you're waiting on those positions or breaks or you're waiting for alerts that you've set up in place. And once those volume alerts or the, the trend line alerts break, you're in, you can't hesitate, and then you're already starting to peel and get out of those and that's it, you're done. Okay, it's not like uh, trading large cap stocks or bigger companies where you can hold them and they're normally going to grow. Because these things, what happens is a wave of people, you have manipulators, you have day traders, you have speculators, they get in it and then they're trying to already make their money and then they get out. And most of the people they're losing out because they're not selling. Let's say you get in right here with a thousand shares, then you start peeling off right here a hundred shares. Another hundred shares, another hundred shares, another hundred shares, another hundred shares. If it's if it to me, if a stock that goes from a two dollar range gets into a fifteen dollar range, I would take my money. I would take my money and run because that's such an extension. And if you look at the Bollinger Band here, look at how extended that is. Bollinger Band just tells you price realism and containment, standard deviation movements on a statistics level. Look at how far extended we are beyond that. Most of the time, prices will be contained. But if it breaks out of there, you know, especially at that level, I would have probably for me, I, I wouldn't have made that much money on this one. I would have just gotten out of it probably around the $4 range or something like that. But I don't trade these because, because once you get larger... You do this when your account is small. If you're trading penny stocks, you're doing this when your account is small. Okay. Normally, once your account starts growing, 200,000, 500,000, a million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million dollar account, once your account starts growing, you can't really trade these stocks. Because the problem is, is again, if you look at this and you have 142,000 shares traded on a daily basis, okay, so let's just say if I traded, let's say a $2 million account here, so here, and we divide that by four, I'm buying 500,000 shares, okay, so 500,000 uh, shares, and this one only traded 142,000. So it would be very difficult for me to get out and scale out of that position once I'm in because that would run the stock price up because I'm buying five times the daily and then eventually I'd have to get out and dump it. So it's a, it's a risky business once your portfolio and account grows. So normally as a larger trader, bigger portfolio account, you'll want to stick to more popular companies. You'll start getting into other companies that are a little more stable, a little more popular. And that is because you can also make much more money and have a better peace of mind. But if you're looking to trade penny stocks, this is the way you do it. You do it because you, number one, like the day trading or like the speculation or you're looking to build your account and this is the way to do it. Maybe you like the penny stock trading because there's not a lot of uh, experts in there because a lot of people who trade penny stocks are, you know, they, they might be the stay at home people or the people that are uh, working, but they're trying to gamble things and uh, and you capitalize on that. So when you have um, support and resistance line like this, and then eventually it breaks out of that and you see that volume right there starts picking up, you know, you get in it, you're in it for a couple days, you know, maybe a couple weeks, and then you start getting out of it because from a $2 to a 350 run, that's it. You're holding that stock. Maybe you're in, let's say, uh, Let's say you're in about 5,000 shares and you peel about $1.50 off. So you make about $7,500 on, on that trade. So this is the thing with penny stocks is that you're, you're typically in and out quick. But most of the time, if you look at it, the opportunities are kind of limited. So here, for example, you had a little opportunity. You have these descending patterns, the break. You have another sideways, another pop. And then again, most of the time, they will sell off. If you just slowly start looking for them, you'll slowly start scanning things. You'll see that sometimes the charts are not very clean. So if the charts aren't clean, just move on. Hit the next button. Uh, but in general, again, okay, selling off. They'll climb, sell off. Okay, the same thing here. You get a little pop, and then what do they do? Most of the time, they sell off. Okay, 
Here's one that kind of worked out. This is a little bit more pricey stock, but you could see it's at around $8, cheaper stock, cheaper company. And then there was your breakout. So if we zoom in a little closer, you can see what happened. The strategy was the same, same as many other stocks. So here's your support and resistance line. Okay, you get in it right around 930 uh, price level. Okay, so as you get into this resistance, we break it. You can even see it coming into this and breaking that coming in with a lot of energy as we break right there you start peeling shares off okay and you start peeling it after you know you see the volume get weaker okay so once this volume starts weakening again you peeling you're peeling already right here you sh you're taking shares off because chances are a nine dollar stock all the way to about fifteen dollars you're almost doubled more than likely it's gonna come back Okay, be real. This is about realism. And what does it do? Comes back and it even goes lower. It's just hype. Okay, this is what penny stock trading is about. It's about the hype, the manipulation, and now it's in the gutter because some of these people now are losing money and then other short sellers got in. This is the way it works. Okay, you can make money to the upside or the downside. Sometimes it's difficult to borrow shares when it comes to penny stocks, and that is simply because the amount of shares that's available is limited. So this is why sometimes it's good to have multiple brokers. Uh, but in general, um, you know, most of these would would be better off shorting rather than buying if you can borrow the shares. So it's um, it, it can whip you around, of course, if you get a spike to the upside and you're short holding it for a long time. But again, the same thing. You're not you don't want to hold these things. It's like dead fish. You don't want to hold on to those things for weeks and weeks at a time because that's not what they normally naturally do. So let me give you a final quick summary. If you're looking to trade penny stocks, the difference in profit potential versus a larger stock is minimal. There is some you can potentially make a little more in penny stocks just because of the explosive runs, uh, percentage gains that they'll have. And sometimes they get that manipulation factor happening. But it's a little more difficult. The natural tendency for penny stocks is to go lower. The natural tendencies or energies for many other stocks is for them to grow as a company. With these stocks, if you're trading penny stocks, many of them are manipulated and many of them trade light volume. When you have light volume trading, then you get more manipulation and it whips that stock around. As your portfolio grows, it's difficult to trade on a lighter volume stock because you want to hide and uh, you know camouflage your position. So it's better to trade the larger stocks. Now, can you still trade um, you know the smaller penny stocks if you have a larger portfolio? You can. You just probably wouldn't trade it all at once. You would probably have to break it apart into multiple days. But for me personally, as you look at explosive runs like a price line. You know, when you start looking at things like this, when you get into stocks that are trading and you have a larger account and you look for breakouts here and you have a five, 10, 20 million dollar account and you get into this right here, the explosive run to the upside is 500 points. Do you want to deal and play with the 500 point runs or do you want to try and scalp? Um, you know, for 20 cents, a dollar, two dollars, because you're you're waiting for those runs, and you have a lot larger uh, stocks to choose from, uh, more stable companies to choose from. If you're trading the more stable companies, now again, it depends on your personal uh, preference. If your character as a person is more gravitated towards penny stocks. There's absolutely nothing wrong with trading penny stocks for the rest of your life. It just takes a certain different kind of personality. But unfortunately, as your account grows and as your portfolio grows, you'll probably want to gravitate towards other areas. And not to mention, it's just also the quality of life of trading. Would you rather you know, put on a trade, let it sit and not worry about it and maybe make a little bit less on it but still make some decent money? 
or do you want to worry about your stock? And with trading larger stocks, I find, or even indexes, I find you know my mind is more at peace, which allows me to do other things with my spare time, such as writing books, because I can put on a trade and then let it sit for you know a week, a month, and not stress about it, not worry about it. Whereas if you're the one that's trading a penny stock, for me personally, that's just my personal characteristics, maybe it's not for you, it's a little bit more difficult to sleep at night if I'm holding, let's say, 20, 40, 50,000 shares of a penny stock. So that's why I don't do that. Um, it's just, it's a little more nerve wracking because it could be manipulated. It can whip around. Uh, they can halt the trading. It can get delisted. There's a lot more risks that are involved in that. And I don't want to risk my hard earned money for those kinds of things. But if you're asking, can you still trade penny stocks? Can you make money with penny stocks? Absolutely. You can even make much more money with penny stocks, especially if you catch them at the right time, looking for proper setups. But sometimes this takes uh, experience, a lot of practice, looking at the charts, looking at swing points. And as you find nice charts and setups and you catch these explosive runs to the upside, you're already peeling things off right away. You get that explosive run, and then boom, it'll it'll come back down. And that's what they do. They get that moment, moment, their five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes of fame, and then they're they're back down. For stocks, it'll be more like a couple days of fame, and then they'll come back. So that's my take on penny stocks, at least in the time that we have allowed. I hope you enjoyed this lesson for those of you that are interested in penny stocks. And even if you don't trade penny stocks. I hope you got some good insight for trading in the markets from this lesson because it really all comes down to energy, the natural energy of the market. Where Where is the supply, the demand? Who's in control? This is all part of energy. What's the natural tendency of a certain type of stock? If it's a cheaper stock, most of them are going to sell off. If it's a company that's looking to grow and constantly evolve, then they'll look to expand in the future. So that's the thing that naturally happens. And it's it happens to everything in this world. It happens all around this world to where if you buy a car, the natural normal thing for it to do is to depreciate in value and to rust, to get older, to need repairs, that's just the normal thing that happens when you buy a car, a vehicle. That's the same thing with stocks. Looking at certain types of stocks, that's what they do. Some sell off. That's their normal tendencies. Some pop higher. Some move stable. There's different areas. And look at it, how they behave in that sector, that area, the type of stock that it is. And if you understand how that, that type of stock is behaving, acting, moving, then you'll get the energy. You'll understand what's its natural tendencies. So I hope that gives you some insights to uh, trading some penny stocks in the markets, what to look for if you're looking to trade penny stocks. Um, normally, like I said, this is for if you're getting started with penny stocks. Uh, but just keep in mind that a lot of these things are manipulated when, you, when it comes to lower price stocks. It's not that you can't trade them. You just need to be careful. They're more quick in for a few days and then you're out so you're you're looking and you're scanning for charts where you get that pop and once you get that little pop you're in it you're in it for a little bit of a gain and then you're out you're scalping okay you're you're nibbling off of those trades so again you just start scanning looking for simple patterns don't make the patterns too complicated just simple support and resistance with penny stocks is all you want and uh, you're in it and then you're out that's it. Very simple. Look for a little bit of extra volume coming in and a little bit of volume in that stock on a trade because you want to also be able to get out of that trade. Don't trade too large on penny stocks right away because if you do, uh, it might be difficult to getting out of that position. So just keep on watching for simple support resistance. That's about the way that I would trade it because the more complicated you make it, the more confusing your strategy will get. So here, looking for support resistance, get in that stock to ride it for a couple days uh, here or there, or a couple weeks at most, start getting out of it, already peeling, uh, peeling your profits off, and then boom, those stocks roll back over. And sometimes they get lower than what they normally were 
at that breakout. All right, so thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, if you're interested in subscribing to the newsletter, which sometimes I give away free books, uh, other training material, and just stay up to date on the new courses, products, and uh, training lessons that I have available, then make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. You can also try my critical charts for a few days absolutely free by just clicking this button on the screen. And uh, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube as well. So thanks again. Remember, do what you love, contribute to others, but most importantly, live life abundantly. I'll see you next time.